I reflect back and I guess some of the words that, that remind me of Bunny the most are passionate, and integrity, and willingness to work, friendly, uh, outreaching, uh, and quietly effective. Uh, I know many of you may laugh about saying that Bunny was quiet because she certainly was not. Uh, if Bunny believed in something or if she had an issue, she was very free and very easy to share that with you whether you liked it or not. Uh, she, because she felt a uh, passion again that, that what she was saying she thought was for the betterment of our community. When I think back about Bunny, uh, the one thing that just instantly pops into my mind um, is her smile and her welcome and uh, the, the, how she always made you feel like she was really truly glad to see you. There was always a way that Bunny in a very professional way was inclusive. She never wanted to leave people out, um, not out of the fun, not out of the action, uh, and, not, and, and not exclude them for some other reason. Uh, she was on the board of the Greater Greer Education Foundation, and we were in the early stages of kind of formulating what uh, the guidelines were going to be, who, what teachers could apply from what schools, and where we would give the scholarships. And so we called ourselves the Greater Greer Education Foundation, which we still do. And she said, if it's Greater Greer, then we need to include the schools over in the Burns District, District 6 or whatever that is. And she said, we can't leave that out because that's part of Greater Greer too. And so because of her fairness, we included, and still do, the schools in Greer and in that district where Burns and D.R. Hill and all of those schools are. <laughs> we were determined we were going to win and we were going to have enough people. We had all these people doing it and then you had to uh, vote, you had to go on Facebook or YouTube or something and vote for the best group of chicken dancers. Bunny wasn't a typical cheerleader, but she was certainly a cheerleader for the city of Greer. And uh, at a time when we really needed people like that, we needed some, some champions. We needed some people to, to push us along, to challenge us, and to, uh, to uh, convey to us this, this idea that I think came partially from her background, but, but also from uh, the, the uh, philosophy of BMW, and that was to be the best we could be and um, she, she pushed us to be that. You know, Bunny did not have a Greer address, but I do think that she adopted Greer as her home. And I think because of the efforts that she gave, both to the Chamber and to the Partnership for Tomorrow, uh, made it a much better place. And I think it made it a, a, a much better place to live and to work. And for that, we'll always be grateful to Bunny's efforts. And I believe that from the bottom of my heart. When I was diagnosed with cancer, and she came to me and started, you know, saying she'd been through the same thing that I had been through. And she said, you can do this. You can do this. And she was always so positive about it. And then when she was diagnosed, I kept saying, okay, you got to be positive too, because you've got to, you know, be as positive with her as she was with you. And we lost our hair together and we wore wigs together and we talked about you know, it was funny that people most of the time didn't know whether we had a wig on or not, and we never told people when we, you know, started wearing, stopped wearing the wigs, or when we started wearing the wigs, and we would see each other at something, and she'd say, which one is it? And I'm like, it's the wig, so, so is mine. And we would just sort of chat about that. So we had a lot of opportunity in the last, I guess, three, three years to uh, catch up on where each one of us was in that walk. And she was always, um, she was always a true professional, but that never got in the way of her being a true friend.